You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in possible. What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Currently on Kansas City Sports Network. It's your uh, your Teal Bros here, Daniel. <laughs> you fell out, Daniel Kuzer and Chris Wright, Teal Boys, or was we with a Z with a Z on the end, boys? Chris, what's up, dude? Uh, I, you know, we're not cool enough to add a Z. I think we just have to be an S. We're no, we're cool to add multiple Z's, boys. Okay, I'll I'll take it. But uh, <laughs> you know, how was your weekend, man? Did you have a good weekend? Uh, weekend, dude. From uh, playing in media or celebrity games, whoever you ask, media celebrity games. We we were out there, man. KC Comets uh, mingling with the the KC elite, if you will, and uh, people who were on like the challenge and uh, uh, real world playing in Timberland boots. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, saw our, saw our old no uh, our old SKC fan Kevin Ellis gave him a little bump in the back, and you were like, you know, Kevin Ellis. I was like, not at all. <laughs> you guys just locked eyes, and yeah. both of you went up for it. It was, I felt left out. I'm not gonna lie, but you know, I'm very friendly, dude. People look at these eyes and they're like, do I know that guy? I think I want to just lock Big it, and you you want a fist bump. I don't know what it is. <laughs> he did. He bumped us. Good to see you, Kev. Call him Kev. I don't know why. Probably best friends now. It looked very natural. Hey, that media game was cool, though. I, I did feel like I, you know, for a 15-minute game, my hips absolutely hurt the next day because I have arthritis and life sucks every day. But I feel I had a good time. To That, that night, I even told you, I was like, Chris, I think I want to come out of retirement and start playing indoor soccer again. And you were like, don't tease me. And I was like, I don't know, man. I'm getting kind of excited. I got the got the itch, and then the next morning I text you, and I was like, "I lied, bro. Like I'm hurt." <laughs> I I was so ecstatic to to receive your initial text message. I was like, "All right, I'll drive to Topeka. We'll make it happen." Um, and then the very next morning, first thing I see when I wake up is, "Man, I'm not good. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna play." <laughs> Buddy, it I can't explain to you. It's I I do I do intense workouts, plyometric stuff, a lot of jumping, a lot of plank burpee stuff moving hips all the time the only way i think i can explain it is that soccer and sports in general are unpredictable movements whereas exercise is you are it's a planned movement you know so it's that unpredictable that unpredictability that you know you might have to pivot or juke real fast that really jolts me really hurts me a little bit so but i had fun throwing on the indoor shoes again uh had a pretty sweet defensive header you had some pretty sweet midfield possession until 19 players from the other team came at came at you. And that's not an exaggeration, people. It was about uh, at least, what, 25 on 13? <laughs> that's what it felt like, man. We had a wall in front of us and a wall, sorry, a wall of red player. We were black, black shirts. A wall of red in front of us and a wall of red behind us. Yeah. And it was like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you win up, the second that ball goes past our midfield, you know, we're yeah. in trouble. So... I'm too competitive for this shit, man. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun. And I'm just like, I'm like, okay, my goal is just, you know, don't let anyone I know score. You know, I, you know, uh, uh, Cody Bradley. I don't really know Cody Bradley very well. Uh, he's with the Blue Testament and uh, seems like good enough guy. Maybe we get to know each other. But I was, lo- I was kind of guarding him on the side. He's like, what are you locking down this whole left side? I said, I am not letting you score on me. Like, I cannot let someone I know score on me. And then Daniel Sperry scores from... <laughs> My nemesis, dude. My nemesis from the freaking Casey star, Daniel Sperry scores. The man just keeps adding to his uh, goal count. I don't know what's going on. What frustrated me about his goal even more yeah. was I initially, I initially played up. But after a while, I was like, balls are getting past us. You know, we, we don't have numbers to help us out. So I started playing back. And he was towards the side. Um, he had a really tough angle to try and shoot it. But there was like three red shirts at the top of the box. So I swoop in. I'm like, I got this top covered. He's not going to be able to, to make a good pass. I thought we were solid. But he shot it, and it went right between the keeper and, and the wall and just right in, man. I, I thought that angle was covered. Apparently it wasn't. But uh, that, that was a – got to give him a little bit of credit there. It was it's good. really cool. It just, you know, at the end of the day, you got to blame uh, ex-Kansas City Chiefs linebacker Sean Barber for letting that goal in. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, Sean Barber looked like he was having a fucking blast out there, dude. 
and he was about to level some people coming into his box. He was playing keeper, by the way. Uh, just I was like, damn, Sean, easy linebacker. <laughs> I was I wanted to stay out of his way. If that ball's in the air, he's coming for it. And I, I was not. He was on our team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, I, he would have taken me out to get that ball. Well, question. We got some pretty cool uh, player introductions. I'd say that was one of the cooler parts of the situation. The whole thing was kind of a clusterfuck from start to finish. And thank you to Casey Comments for having us out. We had a blast and rolled with everything. I'm sure it's not easy to put something together like this. Uh, but I get there and I, I've got the same shirt number as you. I did not pick the same shirt number as you. But you you said, oh, you got number 22 as well. And I was like, I, I guess. I Did you pick that? And you were like, yeah, I always pick it for Emmett Smith. I was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't. <laughs> I picked like number, uh, I think I picked number six. I was like, all right, defensive midfield. I'll play the six, you know? And uh, so whatever. That was one thing, except that they had to announce us at number 22 from No Other Pod, Chris Wright, and also at no, number 22. <laughs> I was like, God damn, this is so embarrassing. And you would think Jimmy would be behind us, but he wasn't. They said, okay, and you're back here. And Jimmy's like, why am I not with my pod bros? You know, this is weird. And so people keep coming. And I guess... He told me that they, they, it was about to be his turn, and then they actually announced the person behind him, so he had to go one behind. Then they announced the person behind him again. He had to let them go through. It's almost the equivalent of like waiting in line in an amusement park and letting people go because your partner hasn't caught up to you yet. <laughs> uh, I want you to set the scene, paint the picture. Yeah, paint oh, the picture. We're coming out. There's smoke, bro. It's it's a smoke city. It's amazing. Cheerleaders. Lights are going. Cheerleaders are doing this thing. Every time you go by, see that ponytail? And, and I was excited. I was like, I'm going to do what the cheerleaders do. Or maybe I'll maybe I'll shine my shoes real fast as I run out or something. You know, something fun. But uh, ultimately, I chickened out. And the lights were going crazy. The music was fun. I highly wanted some, like, Chicago Bulls entrance theme song. You know that song that right. just gets you jacked? Yep. So it comes time. You and me are at midfield. We were like numbers two and three to be announced, by the way. Yeah. Kind of cool. You were right behind this guy who's a chi- who was a child star on Cartoon Network. Didn't know that until someone told me. So we're at midfield. We see Jimmy's coming out. And the lights just come up. <laughs> the lights come up. The smoke stops. The cheerleaders were probably like, smoke break. And they just left, you know. And he, I say cheerleaders, it's a dance team, right? And he just kind of looks around. Like John Travolta from Pulp Fiction, like, what do I do? And then he just kind of does a little bop out to midfield, and I'm grabbing you, dude. I'm, like, falling over like Sal Volcano from Impractical Jokers. I'm just like, I can't believe that just happened. Look at him. Look at him. And you got to make fun of him, because if, <laughs> if, you're, if you're a good friend, you make fun of your friends. <laughs> I just I just remember, like, I'm in my head, right? I'm trying to, you know, strategize in my head how I'm going to play. And you grab me, <laughs> and you <like, laughs> I'm like, look, 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 look. Jimmy hasn't come out yet. <laughs> Jimmy hasn't come out yet, and the lights are, you know, they're up. <laughs> I just see him. Like, he came out, he was like, how's it going, guys? And we're like, how are you? <laughs> uh, and then later, I guess the announcer was like, and Jimmy Mack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Poor guy. He probably does ultimately, out of the three of us, the most work with this uh, situation, and, and poor guy didn't even get his uh, his due. <laughs> Sporting doesn't do this. Casey Current doesn't do this. They don't do like player intros and shit that took like seven minutes out of halftime. Uh, it was neat. It was kind of cool running through the tunnel. That's way too small for a large man like me. I was about to hit my head on the freaking bars they got back there. I was like, all right, let me you know lollipop kid my way out of this tunnel. <laughs> I, I mean, I had a great time. I, that was my first uh, media celebrity game, whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, but, uh, I, I had a blast. Uh, my I dad liked it next year. My dad's not a soccer guy, and he like he kind of liked the pace of everything, and uh, was concerned about the potential flopping. And it's like, oh, that comes with soccer. You know, people do that. So, uh, buddy, I gotta tell you, I'm struggling right now since this is our uh, little peek behind the curtain. People, this is our third time trying to record this podcast since uh i'll just say it at&t verse sucks excuse my language they suck <laughs> gotta bleep that out so here we are buddy uh, the third time i don't remember what i've said and what i haven't said it's a lot of deja vu going on uh, you know what though <laughs> like 
I have laughed that hard at this Jimmy story every single time, and it's not fake. It's one hundred percent genuine. You every time I think out. of it, every time I think of it, I just I, I I struggle to keep it in. I try to keep it together, but just 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 see him waiting. <laughs> He's listening right now. Uh, I'm uh, listening, going these dicks. <laughs> <laughs> but the the mental image and memory I have, I will cherish forever of that. Moment. Yeah. Uh, good to know they let you bring bags in, by the way, for your shoes. I didn't even think to do that. I carried my shoes and had to carry my clothes around like a like a weirdo. So uh, people are like, why is this guy changing? It's awkward. So. Well, what's funny is as you're changing in front of everybody, basically, Dabinia and Haley Mace, when I say everybody, you had shorts under sweatpants. Why, why are you acting like I just showed everyone my boxer briefs? Why are you? No, you had, you had shorts. You had your soccer shorts under your sweatpants. But, yeah. you know, you had, you had to change your shoes. But anyway, Dabinia and Mace are walking by. And they look at me? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> but when I saw that, I was like, man, we're getting ready to play in front of a, you know, one of the best players in the world, you know? And yeah. a little pressure, we know Dabinia and Mace are going to watch you play. Right. right. They probably saw my header and was like, look at that guy. Just class act. <laughs> <laughs> Felt good about that. Uh, my buddy got a video of that, so I abs- absolutely had to post that on the, uh, on the old IG you know, had to brag about it because I didn't get many. You don't get many touches when there's 37 people out there. So a lot of running and not much touching. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I would say, though, I was doing OK. You know, my joints hurt, but cardiovascular, I felt pretty good. Um, it's good. You know, didn't start sweating until after a while. So, buddy, Casey, current news again. There's just things. I I mean, what, what do you even want to talk about? Uh, signings, media day. Uh, reactions, uh, schedule release. We'll have to do a deep dive into the schedule on another episode, by the way, because there's just too much. It's too much going on, and I would like to to look at like, hey, uh, any potential road trips we want to go to as fans, you know, and uh, see about that. So, but what do you, what do you start off with, uh, Hana Glass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, he said that like six other times last uh, last take. So still fun. Uh, he, he loves it. Um, Still funny. It, it's it's pretty good. I wish I had your pronunciation. Uh, That's it. It's it's only one. Uh, it's well, it's two A's, right? Or two N's. Sorry, two N's and two N's. Uh, uh, feels like Hana. We'll see. We'll make her say it. <laughs> say your we name. Can have her on and have her say it, right? Well, she works. She she was from a, a little bitty club out of Germany. Uh, Bayern Munich. You heard of these guys? Oh, have I? Pretty big uh, deal. My, my favorite club in the world outside of yeah. uh, Kansas City Soccer. That's right. Um, you know, but three year, three year deal, right? Um, and the third year is a mutual option, which you know Kansas City loves to do for for players. Um, so I, I'm ecstatic about that. You know, if she's healthy, which is a concern, right? Like she's not going to start the beginning of the year uh, right away, probably. But if she's healthy, she's one of the best right backs in the world. Um, I think. <clears throat> On goal.com, she was like, I think the 26th best player um, in 2021. Uh, you know, just a, a ton of potential here. Um, we talked about it a while back when, you know, when we were going over uh, the roster and what we wanted to see or needed to see. And when Chris and Edmonds left, it kind of, you know, we lost some of that veteran leadership. Yeah. So, you know, to have her come in and fill that role. I mean, you know, I, I love Chris and Edmonds, but this is a uh, a surefire upgrade. I mean, I don't know how you look at it any other way. Also had some time with Paris Saint Germain, a uh, little club out of you know Paris, so that's a good <laughs> good time, uh, dude. And then a lot of lot of experience at the international level with the Swedish national teams. And uh, are we are we the villains in NWSL? Because if any other team was doing what we're doing. You'd hate them, right? Like you would, yeah. You would love to hate them and hate to love them and stuff like that. And I'm just like, we are. Oh my god, it's like when LA Gal. Okay, here's where this comes down to it. A lot of times, teams sign big players and don't utilize them well. Like big players don't make a team all the time. And all I can think about is when LA Galaxy always has these big splashy signings. And then they like barely squeeze into the playoffs or don't make the playoffs at all. And I'm just like waiting to see how we do with these these people, man. And it's uh 
it's scary and exciting at the same time. So I'm optimistic. I think it's just absolutely crazy that we went to the championship last year and we got significantly better. How does that make any sense? It, it doesn't, but it's happening. It's happened. It's happening. You know, uh, I'll say this now and I'll probably say it again before the beginning of the year, but as it stands, how we don't know the result on the field, right? We have no idea what's going to happen this year, but you have to say that this front office, this ownership group has put their best foot forward and, and put everything into winning this year. If, if things don't work out, it's going to be hard to blame the front office because what they have done is is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. No, 100%. Um, I'm I'm excited, man. Uh, in addition, well, that we signed Han- Hanna Gras for two years with a third-year option. Um, like you said, though, one of the best right backs in the world. Didn't you say uh, top 50 players? What would you text me? Yeah, according to, to Goal, Goal.com, I believe, she was like ranked 26th, I think, out of 50 oh, wow. in best players in the in the world. Uh, well, that's... Wow. Yeah, people are definitely going to hate us. That's wild. Uh, we, Nat, we, we snagged up Michelle Cooper, locked her down. You know, put, we, we put a ring on it, so to speak, you know. <laughs> uh, three Three-year contract through 2025 there. So I think there was no doubt when you trade up to acquire this pick in the draft, you are absolutely going to sign them. So we're excited. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she's our first uh, pick that has signed. So, you know, that's exciting. But I mean, I, I don't want to compare her to anything because I don't want to put the expectation on her. But I definitely think the potential is there for her to be like our, our Sophia Smith, um, where, you know, there was a lot of chances that we were just one foot away, just one touch away from from getting it in the back of the net. I see her converting converting those at a, a much higher rate than what we've had. And she can certainly create for herself too and others. So, I mean, he, I, I'm incredibly excited. Uh, and then Mimi Larson as well, right? Like yeah. we have a ton. We have, we have a lot of uh, starting caliber forwards and then a lot of depth as well oh yeah and you mentioned uh our first draft pick we signed speaking of a couple other draft picks that news just dropped today uh is that the uh, uh is it michelle cooper and uh spanstra going to the u23s yep that's exciting stuff obviously that you know those are two players that could get some time at the senior senior level uh moving up through those ranks and everything and you probably know this already but Spanstra and, and Michelle Cooper played on the same club team. You knew that? I'm shaking my head. Um, yes, but I really did not know that. Uh, you didn't know that? I, I didn't know that. That's oh, my cool. God. That's, that's awesome. My my wife broke news, and I said, I'm going to tell Chris, but don't worry. I'll give you credit. And she's like, Chris probably already knows. She gives you entirely too much credit, my friend. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know why she would. You know, we... She was a slug think, last week. I think. Oh shit! I think she was on another podcast though. Michelle Cooper was saying this, and I think it's a podcast that you regularly listen to. Oh, okay. Uh, we don't promote other shows on it. No, I think it was uh, the Attacking Third, maybe. Yep, I do That's listen so. to them regularly, but I probably missed that one. Probably uh, missed. I need. Best. I need to listen to it. It's all right, man. Uh, Michelle Cooper's excited to be here. You know, she says this. This organi- This organization is extremely special, and has created an environment that. I know will help me continue to grow as a player and a person. After what this team accomplished last season, I can't wait for this season to start. You got me excited too, Michelle. I'm excited. Love it. Absolutely. Uh, love it. We're pretty excited about Desiree Scott signing on again for another year, right? Except yep. wah, wah, something happened. She got she's got a little uh, little something going on, a little injury. She needs to take care of before the season, so probably won't. Uh, not sure when we'll. When we'll see her, you know? Yeah, I guess the injury took place uh, at the end of 2022. Um, so, you, you know, the good thing is we have the depth. We have the depth to to take that hit. Uh, I, I think you could put Gatra back there just fine. Um, I mean, th- this this midfield is, is built for versatility, and it's built to soften the blow of, of injuries and national team duty. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't... I don't think we're going to miss much, 
but um, that's not a knock on her just because we have uh, a ton of quality in the midfield. Yeah, 100%. There, there's quality there. It just, uh, you know, sucks that it has to happen, you know? Yeah. Injuries are part of the game. It's part of it. Uh, she was excited, though. She had a nice little post online saying, you know, I'm, I, you know, good luck to everyone in the meantime. I, I will be back, hopefully, to join my, my uh, you know, sisters in teal and uh, in red in Canada, so... Well, appreciate hey, you, the update, though. Appreciate yeah. the update, because we would have had no idea potential For sure. otherwise. You had a little fun, uh, kind of got out of your comfort zone as a, uh, you know, color commentator here on, on currently, and also the, uh, you know, I don't know, you got to go to media day over over Casey Current's media day, man. How, how'd that go? Paint the, paint the scene for us. Paint the picture. <laughs> well, it was a little short notice. Um in terms of when it was going to be held. So uh, I was not able to get there for the entire media day. I was able to get there, you know, midway through. Um, but, you know, the Kansas City Current took care of me. Um, they, you know, I got in there. They allowed us to have uh, one-on-one interviews uh, with some of the players. They were fairly short. Um, we only had a couple of minutes, you know, with each player. But, uh, you know, I, I just want to thank the Current for... You know, giving me the time to go chat with them a little bit, um, and just kind of get a feel for, you know, their their you know free agency or just kind of what they're expecting for next year. But uh, but we got three interviews planned for this podcast. I'm just sound interviews. bites, sound bites, um, planned for this podcast. So without further ado, let's kick it over to my conversation with Vanessa Di Bernardo. This is the very first free agency period in NWSL history. Can you walk me through your experience? Well, were you say? Yeah, it was it was definitely new. Um, I think a lot for all of us players and and just an opportunity for those older players to kind of get the chance to um kind of <laughs> essentially push the league and forward. Um you're kind of getting the opportunity to to talk to teams and and kind of see where you would fit and where it would be the best fit for you as well. So I think it's it's great that the league has gotten to that point to kind of give players a little bit more of a choice um, and not just getting traded all the time. So um, it's, it's good for the league. <laughs> did you and Morgan come up with this decision together? Did you like scheme this or did it just kind of work out that way? It's actually really funny. Uh, it was we're really close friends, but we didn't really talk about it. So um, I think we all kind of did it individually and kind of did the experience on our own. And and um, she made a decision a little bit earlier than I did. So um, hearing that and hearing that we were both actually looking to come here was uh, exciting for us. But uh, we didn't really talk about it until it happened. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, we have a very crowded, very talented midfield. Have you talked with Coach Potter about where you want to play or where you might think you'll play for what role you might have in the uh, midfield? Not, not really. Um, I think we all know that the midfield is is talented here, and I think that's exciting. I think from a training perspective, it's going to push us all to be better players, better teammates, and and really push the team forward. And um, that excites me. Um, I haven't. It's it hasn't even. Priest hasn't officially started yet, so <laughs> I think we'll we'll get there. But um, I'm excited to be a part of just such a talented midfield group. And I'm sure you've got this question from everybody. But what exactly drew you to Kansas City? Yeah, I think kind of watching from afar last year, you could see the the joy the team was having, and and the fan base and the support that they got, and and just from the ownership group, how much they're supporting the game, supporting women's sports, and really pushing the boundaries forward. I think as a female athlete who's been in this league for 10 years now, <laughs> which is crazy, um, that's exciting. And to get the opportunity to be a part of that, I think, is is pretty special. Dude, that's cool. That's my first time hearing this. Uh, look at you. God damn, you're a regular-ass journalist. Look at you. Uh, it sounded quiet as hell. Or was there anyone else even around? 
it, it was a room where it was uh, two or three other people, maybe, and we each had our own table. So she would come and sit down and literally bo- be one on one with you. So there's what? a little bit of, yeah. So it's, it's like the speed dating. <laughs> it, I mean, as soon as they were done with you, she would go, you know, to another. Uh, yeah. Inter- to see if that's a good media person worth talking to, like speed dating. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was kind of weird because it was like, you know, you don't want to be loud, right? You don't want to be yelling across this, you know, fairly empty room. But to have a conversation and, you know, it, it was definitely interesting, but uh, Dude, that was super so, cool. I'm so proud of you. Look at you. You're growing up right, be- right before our eyes, everyone. This is wild. Uh, yeah, I just, I always love hearing the excitement and everything. And thought it was kind of cool that you said, you know, were you guys, did you and Morgan, were you scheming to be here? And and that's that's kind of hilarious that they were not. Um, you kind of assumed that they that they were like, hey, we're good buddies. Like we want to do this together. And, you know, probably similar to the Sam U.S. Lynn Williams thing. You know what I mean? Um, but they, they were doing their own thing. So, I mean, a few things stuck out to me. Uh, the first one was that, like, you know, how free agency can push the league forward, right? Give the players a lot more um, freedom to, you know, to go to whatever they want, not be traded all the time, as she put it. Uh, but yeah, I was also actually, I was surprised that, you know, her and Morgan did not kind of, go together because to me i thought when they're announced together they're they're really good friends so i thought instantly like that was them together making kind of a group decision um but to, to see that they didn't but they came to the same conclusion just goes to show the impact that this team this front office these facilities this new stadium has on on bringing in bringing in free agents for sure for sure um who else you got man you got uh, more right yeah, I got I got two more. I was able to sit down with Addison Merrick. Um, so let's kick it over to Addison. You know, we had a deep run last year and went to the championship. How important was that championship experience playing the final? I think the experience of playing in a final is huge because it's a game that's a little bit different than others. Um, there's a lot more pressure. Uh, essentially, there's a lot more on the line. So I think that being able to get that experience and a lot of our team got that experience. I think that that is amazing going into this season because now we kind of know how to navigate the postseason a little bit better and we'll have, um, I think we'll just overall be a bit more calm uh, and just kind of, we've been there before now. So it's just putting pieces together. Matt Potter style, he puts a lot of midfielders forward and leaves you as you know, fairly exposed. Is that something that takes some time to get used to on that back line, being exposed like that and, you know, for the count and stuff like that? Um, yeah, I definitely think that anytime someone goes up, we're trying to think about how do we want to, or how, how do we want to have our form of kind of like, you can say that. Yeah. So, um, sorry. I guess, yeah. I guess the main focus whenever people go up is just um, focusing on the counterattack. As a defender, you think about what's the worst thing that's going to happen at any point. Um, so just to be prepared for the worst and always think about um, ways that we can stop a counterattack at any point. So I think that with the people in the back line that we have, we have a lot of speed and we have a lot of, um, I think we have a lot of people that are coming in with experience now because we made it so far last season. So I'm excited for that. Wow. Okay. You you love you some Addison Merrick too, man. Rock chalk and all that, you know. I got to watch her play at KU um yeah. in person. So to kind of a full full circle moment, right? That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh I, I like that she's out here giving life lessons. Always expect the worst, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, the championship experience, right? Like that's gonna be so crucial because a lot of you know, we didn't have the star power then that we do now but for those younger players uh you know those role players to get that type of experience you know is if you had told me at the beginning of the year last year as america would be starting for us in the finals i don't know if i would have believed you right mm. but she started for us in the finals and i thought she had a, a a pretty good game with the exception of you know this one bad deflection which can happen to anybody but yeah how dare you ask about that game she can't sleep at night how dare you <laughs> But I, I love how, you know, she gave us, I felt like she was going to give us a little bit of a secret and she kind of caught herself on 
um, you know, on the back line there. But, you know, we have a ton of speed. She was right. We have a ton of speed on that back line. Um, and that's obviously crucial to, to preventing any kind of counter. Um, and that gives our, our midfield a lot of flexibility to get up and, and, and move forward if, if we need to, to pull one back. Oh, yeah. No doubt. He's class, man. Class defender. And then we got one, one last interview with uh, Mallory Weber. So let's kick it over to Mallory. You're on the sideline. Were you able to get like a different perspective and help the team or just kind of taking a step away and just looking at it from a different angle? Yeah, I'd say there was more taking a step away. Like this is my first major injury. So it definitely was hard to find a new role in the team quickly towards the end of the season it was much easier but kind of those initial couple of months where yeah, I need to step away focus on me um still supporting the team and showing up when I can but uh yeah it, injury was a lot harder than I'd expect it to be did you get a lot of like just uh like coaching and just kind of the mental side the mental like toughness um after that injury or working through that injury yeah I would say definitely mentally but kind of being able to deal with a plan not going in it's supposed to or oh it's how months okay and well now it's 11 months so being able to deal with adapt um to those little changes and not just have oh this is next step next step next step oh i could didn't quite go as we wanted so that was tough to deal with kind of a bit um you know you're coming back to a very competitive back line i mean there's like 10 defenders and then draft picks there's a lot of competition how do you approach that situation um, coming back with just, you know, an incredibly competitive back line? Yeah, I think I've been lucky to always come into a preseason that it, I know it is competitive, which I enjoy because that makes me be better. Um, but right now, controlling when I can, which is getting back to like my level of fitness and um, like doing the things that I know that I am best at and hoping that that aligns with what the coach is looking for and what can help us but i think with so many players you could have different lineups regular i don't see a set back a set lineup throughout the whole season with how much talent we have this year seems like everybody's versatile yeah yeah and all that to me <laughs> I don't know. everybody's versatile listen to you what a pro what a professional it, it was a sink or swim kind of a thing right you're out there your first uh media day you just got to kind of make the most of it so well, you uh, did. Uh, you really thrived a little bit, my friend. And it, uh, I don't know. I have to say, I don't want to say I was worried about you, but I was kind of like, like worried? Not worried. That's why I didn't say that. <laughs> I want to say that uh, I was just kind of like, wow, look at him just getting out there. Like, I, I couldn't find the time or the uh, situation to get out there. So you made it happen and got us some pretty sweet sound bites. How many people did you talk with overall? A total of seven, I believe. A total of seven, yeah. Okay. I know it, it was kind of tough because, you know, you had only had a couple minutes. So you ask a question, they might give like a 50 second answer and you only have one more question left. Well, that's so. pretty decent sound bite though for your phone, I assume. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad. It also probably helps that no one else is really talking in the room. Did, did you feel kind of on display? Kind of like everyone uh, listening to you? A little bit. Um, so that was kind of different, but you know. You're in that moment, right? You're just laser focused on whoever yeah. you're talking to. So, um, and then credit to, got to give Tucker a shout out here. I think the audio, um, he cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, Did he? Okay. I, I think so. Cause, uh, credit is due. He made it sound really good. So, so big shout out to Tucker back there. Man, I love it. The, uh, that's so crazy because I think that wasn't it like a seven hour ordeal this media day. Wasn't, didn't players just come and go like at certain times? They did. They had like an hour and a half block, which they would be available. Um, and a lot of it happened before I got there. So uh, the remaining bit of interviews I got were a lot of the the draftees and stuff. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was a uh, next time I will know what to expect and be able to prepare a little differently. But, um, you know, I really love how Mallory Weber commented um, in terms of, you know, how do you handle something not going to plan, right? Like that type of, I've never been injured. I've never been injured, thankfully. I have no idea what it would be like to have an injury, have it drag on longer, um, and then come back in and have to compete 
with world class Bayern Munich players, you know, that, that takes a ton of mental toughness. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I, I just Mallory Weber, you know, trying to get back to her fitness and everything, and it's like it's gonna push her though. Like she said, it's like I iron sharpens iron, man. Like I gotta go. And if I don't, I get left behind. Yeah, absolutely. And I I think she'll she'll have a a fair amount of of time in the backfield. Um, I think she's going to be on the field and get a lot of minutes. Good to know. Um, cool. No other interviews. Uh, we're going to have some in the weeks to come. The other ones you talked to. Or? I I think we can get them out there at some point. Uh, cool. Love that. Yeah. Something to kind of sprinkle in in uh, yeah. for the remaining off season. Did you see the image that popped up on the YouTube video just now? God. That was freaking cool. I mean, Tucker knows what he's doing. He's the best. I'm still kind of like, I don't really know how everything works. Uh, I just <laughs> I just need to make sure I have internet and a microphone, and I only had one of those this week. So uh, <laughs> now we got the internet rolling, man. It feels good. One last thing before we wrap up. You see that NWSL schedule announcement from Casey Current, that video? I did. I thought it was super, super cool. I like I'm a fan of the movie Wally. Yes, that stinking robot made me have emotions, which is ridiculous. Pixar films normally do that to me. But they did this with a little uh, little robot that draws lines on a field. If you guys haven't seen it, go out to Twitter or something. It's, apparently, a, a lot of teams had very creative announcements for their schedule. Did you watch any others? I saw Chicago. They had the uh, oh the Wednesday dance. Did they? Yeah, it was actually, I thought it was well done. I got a kick out of it. Um, I'm trying to think of any others that really caught my attention. I think it's just them and them in the current. I think you're the only two that really stuck out to me. Uh, it's just, it was really cool. Just looked like a sad old robot. And music is everything too, right? They played like some sad music because the schedule wasn't released. And then when the schedule was released, the robot was like painting lines to happy music. And it's just, uh, I don't know, man. I've always been a fan of composers and, and scores of soundtracks and stuff that tell me how to feel. I think it's very important to the cinematic experience. Yes. No, I don't care. You don't even care. You don't even care, do you? You don't even care about music. I do care. You, you ever watch any of those scenes that you just replace the music and the whole tone is completely different? Yeah. On Twitter, it'll be like a scene between Harry Potter and, you know, Baltimore, and you change yeah. the music and it's a completely different thing. They're no longer oh, yeah. feuding. They're the best friends. Go watch go watch Infinity War and like replace some of that music, man. It becomes a whole lot less dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking hell. Uh well that schedule dropped. Uh, you know, first three games. Uh you 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 said a quick few things that jump out to you. First three games are revenge games. North Carolina Courage, Portland Thorns, Chicago Red Stars. So tell me why those are revenge games real quick. North Carolina, the first thing that jumps out is Dabinia's former team, right? Okay. Um, you know, Portland, self-explanatory. We're going to see how our roster, you know, tests immediately against Portland. Because they beat so, us in the championship. They, they beat us in the championship. Um, so that'll be an instant test of of might. And then uh, and then we play Chicago, which is where Gatra and DiBernardo came from. So... There'll be three interesting games right off the bat. True, man. Very true. Um, and then, you know, crappy-ass Orlando after that. That doesn't really <laughs> jump out to you. No, we'll, we'll take a deep dive into that schedule probably next week sometime. Uh, you know, Challenge Cup, of course, was announced. and it's gonna The new format's going to play it all through the season, which is kind of cool. Um, and then, you know, I think it'd be neat to see if any games match up that... Uh, that w- that we play in the same city as as Sporting KC does, maybe like same weekend or a week apart or something. Um, that'd be kind of cool to kind of have double soccer for a little vacation. Absolutely. And then one last one last thing to point out on the schedule: uh, last year and the year prior, I don't even know if they've had it previously, but there is a decision day or whatever they want to call it. Um, is that what they're doing? It they're calling it that, or well, uh, that's what people are calling it. But <laughs> uh, you know. October 15th, they're all going to start at like 5 p.m. I don't know which time zone. So it's going to be uh, a 34. Okay. So it's four for us, so probably five Eastern, yeah. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, it's going to be absolute madness. And if you remember last year, like spots one through four or whatever were decided on that last day. Yeah, true. So it's going to be absolute madness. Um, take the day off. If, if you work that day, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> That's true. And if you're working on Sunday, get a new job. Uh, <laughs> cool, man. Cool. I'm excited. Uh, I'll, we'll break down that schedule next week sometime. That'll be good. Seeing as this is the third time recording this podcast, I'm a little tired. Um, much, much love to you for your patience on everything with my internet capabilities and, and Tucker as well. So uh, anything else you want to add this week? No, I man. I, I think that's it for now. That's it, dude. That's it. Well, cool. Guys, as always, thank you so much for uh, tuning in this week. Love having you here. Love talking KC Current Soccer with you. And uh, follow us online, Twitter, Instagram, uh, at NoOtherPod, at Dan Kuzer, at ChrisWright21. You can send us an uh, email, NoOtherPod at gmail.com. Leave us a rating and review, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. And uh, we'll be back next week. The Teal Boys talking more... Uh, <laughs> more Casey Current Soccer with you. So thanks so much. And we love you. Thanks for watching this production of Casey Sports Network, the fastest growing sports media network in Kansas City. Check out these videos that feature our team of more than 15 former players, insiders, and analysts bringing you the best Chiefs coverage you can find. Entertain, educate, inform. Casey Sports Network.